Hello everyone, welcome to Travel Explore Celebrate Life with Veena Wall. I am your host Neil Patel and as always I'm joined by Sunila. Today we are going to take an important city of incredible India and that is Varanasi. Sunila, welcome. And today it's going to be more of an interview because you have oh. been to Varanasi, yeah. I haven't. So what we'll do this episode is that I'll ask you the questions, you tell us why we should visit Varanasi, what's so great about Varanasi and all of that. So without wasting any time, let's let's get into Varanasi. Now, often I've seen videos, I've seen, I've heard like podcasts about Varanasi and they always start with the temples and they always start with the spiritual stuff. But I love food, you love food. And I want to start this episode on Varanasi of Travel Explore Celebrate Life with food. So when you are in Varanasi, what are some of the things that you would say are the best things that you should try? Or what is so great about the food of Varanasi that, you know, there are so many videos that have been made of what you should be having when you're in Varanasi. Hi, Neil. And hi, everyone. And Neil, what a great way to start. I'm really happy to start with the food because, you know, honestly, for me, if, uh, I've been to Varanasi twice already and I'm happy to go there a third time. And every time I will make sure I go in the winter months because you can really enjoy the food there. And, um, you know, the second time round, I went with the same friends I went with even in the first time. So that should tell you something. They were all excited uh, enough to come back there a second time with me. And we all, you know, we all were saying that if there was one reason to come to Varanasi again and again, other than that it is the oldest city, other than the spirituality, other than the, you know, umpteen reasons that you have to visit Varanasi, it would be, and I will start this, uh, the food part of it with my most favorite food. And the reason to come back to Varanasi would be to taste Malayo. So Malayo is a delicacy that you see on the streets and, you know, you can only have it in winter because it's only in winter that, the milk it's basically even when i'm speaking i'm i'm like salivating because the milk is um, they they kind of churn the milk so much that there's this light foam on top and then that is flavored with saffron and other um, you know some uh, almonds and other stuff and it is just simply delicious so if you had to like typically we are we're doing this episode the other way around and I thought even when we speak of food I should speak the other way around and start from dessert because Malayo is something that I have tasted only here so you get it only in Uttar Pradesh and the surrounding areas and you only get it where the milk is really good and only in winter so I would say that's a reason to go it's served in a kulhad and you will see it um, delightfully placed on the streets of Varanasi and you you have to taste it so I would say that Malayo would be the perfect reason to go there um, of course there are many other you know cuisines of food in Varanasi that you should be tasting since we've started with dessert let's complete that you have the rabri you have the jalebi and uh, all of that wonderful um, desserts so you'll see it lined uh, in Lanka area near Ram Bhandar and all of that but the best thing to start off the day is a good breakfast in Varanasi and the street food it's really good so at Ram Bhandar you have the sabji kachori and it's really tasty. It's amazing, simple food, but so hot, so amazing. And you have to stand in queue. You don't really get it as soon as you walk in. So sabji kachori is one. I mentioned the malayo, I mentioned the rabdi. Um, and then of course the lassi. So there is this famous blue lassi house where you get all kinds of lassis that you want. And then you have that thick fat layer of cream right on top of it. It's as good as a dessert again with a lot of and different kinds of lassis that you can taste. What many people don't know is Varanasi is also famous, famous for its buttered toast. So white butter, what we call malai on the toast and it's really, really yummy. So you can have it with a nice cup of chai. Uh, so tea and toast together is again something that it's famous for. But what a surprise, Neil, is it, it is also famous for non-vegetarian food. So Banarsi Ghosht is something that you can have in Varanasi as well. And that is really a delicacy that you should try. And international cuisine. So I remember sitting on Assi Ghat and one of the most famous things to do on Assi Ghat other than the temples and other than spirituality is really to have a pizza and some of the best pizzerias can be found on Assi Ghat to beat any pizzeria even in, in Mumbai for that matter. Also some restaurants on the Ghats uh, like Raga Cafe serve Korean food 
which is also quite good. So there really is a, are a lot of reasons to go and taste the food in Varanasi. And I think we can do a separate episode. I, I would love for you to go and try all of that and you come back and then we do a whole episode just on food in Varanasi. And to finish everything, you have to have the Manarsi pan. It's so good and so delicious that I remember actually packing pan and bringing like, you know, the even the ready-made ones and they're really good at packing. They know how to do it. But even just the, just the leaves, like you can just buy the leaves and bring them back home, put it in the fridge and enjoy it because it's, it's just something else. That remind me of, reminded me of the lyrics from that song from Dawn, like, you know, <laughs> Hai ke paan banara swala. Correct. And, you know, for a second, when you were talking about the pizzas, I thought you were going to say the pizzas are better than the pizzas served in Italy. But I was like, okay, thank God she said Mumbai. Because, yeah, it would take a lot to for the pizzas to be better than the pizzas of Italy. No, but the thing is, there are a lot of foreigners and expats who have made Varanasi their home. So even when we were, you know, having a pizza out there, we saw a lot of them who actually live in Varanasi. And I think that is one of the reasons that international food and uh, is also quite popular out there. Cool. It's on the list, guys. Varanasi, if you are a foodie, if you're a food enthusiast, or if you're a food blogger, go blog about Varanasi because the food is great. Now, Sunina, let's come, come to the main thing. Mm -hmm. That is the spiritual stuff that you see in Varanasi. You also mentioned one of the ghats out there, but we'll come to the ghats a little later. Now, when it comes to spirituality, and I think 90% of tourists or people from around India and from around the world visit Varanasi for this, what like what are some of the things that you should visit you should see you should experience when it comes to the spiritual stuff the temples etc etc when it comes to varanasi you know one thing that really strikes you when you reach varanasi is that it really is a spiritual place and i don't mean religious you know i mean spiritual because there was just something about sitting on the ghats and being by the Ganges to really feel feel the spirituality here. And of course, we can't uh, we can't not talk of the temples when we speak of Varanasi. And we should definitely visit the temples. And it was a uh, it was very nice to visit the temples as well. So there are so many temples out there. But I will start with the most important one, and that of course is the Kashi Vishweshwar uh, Temple or the Kashi Vishwanath Temple. Uh, but before we go that, uh, we have to know how Varanasi was named and how it is also called as Kashi because the name also comes in with the temple. So Kashi basically means something that is shining. In Sanskrit, it means kasa, means to shine. And that is why it was known as Kashi because the temple and, uh, you know, the domes of the temple are made of gold and they used to be shining. So that is why you say Kashi Vishwanath Temple. And that is why the city was also named Kashi. Varanasi, the name really comes from uh, the two tributaries of the Ganga that we see here, Varuna and Asi. And Asi is a very small tributary in the southern part, Varuna is in the northern part, and together it becomes Varanasi. And of course, then the British also called it Banaras. So whichever way you call it, you are in one of the oldest cities, one of the uh, places for learning. And it's not surprising that you, you find it spiritual because there was also Buddhism was a big part of Varanasi and nearby in Sarnath, um, you have where Buddha preached his first sermon and I went there and it's definitely a place. There was just something about the vibes in Sarnath. It's so clean, so beautiful. And to even think that the Buddha walked, you know, here and he preached his sermon here is something quite uh, amazing. Jainism also is really important out here and they say that uh, the Tirthankar Parshwanath was born here. So it's not just Hinduism, but Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, everything comes from Varanasi. So it's definitely something that's spiritual. Coming back to the temples, the Kashi Vishwanath temple is something that you would start off with. Uh, I found that the best time to go there really was the morning because that's typically how we start a day by praying to the Lord. And this is the temple of Shiva, the glittering temple as they call it. And it was destroyed many times. Aurangzeb also came in and destroyed it. The present day temple, as we know, was built by Rani Hailya by Holkar from Indore. And it's standing really nicely till this date. Um, some of the other temples we visited there and I found that it was, uh, you know, some of it was actually fun to visit was the Karl Bhairav temple. Like the name says Karl Bhairav, uh, it's a form of Shiva that even the death is scared of. So they say that even death fears Shiva 
in that temple and it's the idol is surrounded by skulls and everything and they say that if you really wish for something at kashi vishveshwar or karbhairav it comes true so you know you can imagine how we were going around really wishing uh, for tourism to start again when i went in november and i think that is coming true uh, two of the temples that i really enjoyed going to was uh, sankat mochan temple which is the temple of hanuman and uh, you know it is one of the temples where the statue of hanuman actually faces the statue of lord rama out there and they give this delicious uh, besan laddus as prasad so there are a lot of stories around uh, that and nearby is the durga temple again the you know the goddess is revered there and they say that she appeared there herself in the temple that is the story it's a nice structure red colored uh, you know temple and it is right by a lake so these were some of the main temples of course there are many 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 other temples and in fact now when they were building the kashi um, corridor which is the newest attraction in the city where they made it very easy for people to access the ghats while they were building it they actually discovered many other temples which were buried underneath so there's you know if you are wanting to visit all the temples you have another reason to go to kashi if you haven't been there in the last 6 months or so i mean there's just so much to do right and if you are to really think of what we have still not discovered about incredible india there's just like too much and that's why like there's so many so many places that um you can really visit in incredible india right now sunina let's come to the rt because rt is like the top draw and everyone goes like whoa you should visit the rt uh-huh. now there is an evening rt but i recently also came to know that there is a morning rt so tell us a little bit about the rt and also tell us should it be visited in the evening should it be in the morning or both times Neil, before we move on to the Aarti, I did forget to mention that the Kashi Vishwanath Temple is one of the twelve Jyotir Lingas in uh, India. So, if you do visit it, uh, you know you've kind of achieved the highest form of uh, of uh, like religiousness that you could ever in Hinduism. So, that's something definitely you could look at. But like I told you, I think for me, when I went there, sitting by on the ghats by the river. and witnessing the aarti was something i can never forget and uh, uh, really uh, just the thought i think i did mention this in one of the episodes earlier that it is really special because when you are praying to the ganges you are actually praying to the ganga you are praying to life and you are praying to you know you are praying nature so you are praying to nature we are acknowledging nature out here and it's quite stunning so i would say uh, experience it twice at least so the main aarti that happens is on dashashwamedh ghat and this happens in the evening so that is something you just cannot miss one of the most popular ways to really witness the aarti is to be in a boat and take a nice evening boat ride a sunset boat ride and then by the time your boat ride is ending um, the the boatman will make sure that you come close to the ghats and you can actually witness the aarti from the boat so it's quite beautiful it's quite stunning and again it's one of the best ganga aartis that i have seen um this time round meal when i went in november i also saw it from the ghats so i did see the evening aarti both from the boat and the ghats and both are stunning but definitely don't miss it from the ghats in the evening the morning aarti actually does not take place near the shashwamedh ghat it is a different experience this takes place on the assi ghat and this is a little away from the shashwamedh ghat not too far away and they also have something called subah banaras that happens here so there are there is music there is dance sometimes and then followed by the aarti so if you are looking for a different experience then look at it for the morning but if you don't have the time or maybe you are in varanasi just for one day don't miss the evening aarti and that too from the boat it it is really quite spectacular and i would quite agree although i have not been to varanasi any ganga aarti that i have seen whether it's in haridwar or rishikesh like they are just incredible and they put you in the zen mode which I mean yeah. if it's and Neil you know words, this right? this time round I actually learned something out there and they said that the ganga aarti is actually when you're praying you're not just praying to the ganga but you're praying to bhagwan and they explain the meaning of bhagwan and what is bhagwan so bhagwan bh stands for bhumi g stands for gagan w stands for vayu a for agni and n for neel so basically you are praying to the earth to the air to um, the fire and to water so all these senses together and 
I think it's quite really quite a spectacle. You briefly mentioned two of the ghats. Like, what are mm-hmm. the three ghats again? Neil, there are eighty-eight ghats in Varanasi. Okay. So <laughs> no, but there are the three main ones, right? Yeah. So there are. You have the Dashashwamedh Ghat, which is the main, main, main Ghat that you just cannot miss. And uh-huh. very close by is the Kashi Vishwanath Temple and the Kashi Corridor, as we now would call it. Um, again, this Ghat, it's really peaceful to sit there in the morning and the evening as well. Evening, of course, you have the Aarti there. A little away from that would be the Assi Ghat, where the Assi River, uh, we say, is coming in. Uh, so that is again where the Subhai Banaras takes place, which has some cafes, which has, uh, you know, cafeterias, a nice place for a coffee, a nice place to even just relax by the river. So Assi Ghat is the other one. And the one that generally is quite famous uh, for cremation is the Mani Karnika Ghat. So these three are the most famous. Then you have the Raj Ghat, where again, there is a lot of construction going on and they're planning to get it uh, really modernized a little bit with all the facilities. And uh, w- what was really interesting is a lot of the ghats were actually built by the Marathas. So the Marathas were very much interested in developing this area and you will find the Holkas, the Shindyas, the Peshwas, all of them have contributed in building a lot of these ghats. So you know, walking by the ghats in the morning and the evenings is very, very, very pleasant. Perfect. Sunila, so as we reach the end of the episode, I wanted to ask you just one thing. Most of these spiritual places like come to life during celebratory times, right? Mm -hmm. What are some of the celebrations that happen in Varanasi? And like, is it worthwhile visiting Varanasi during these celebrations or just throughout the year? They have a lot of celebrations throughout the year. The one celebration I think you should, if you have a chance, definitely visit is during Dev Diwali. So Dev Diwali takes place uh, approximately about 15 days after Diwali. Uh, And that is when they say that the gods come down to play Diwali and all of Varanasi is lit up in millions of lamps. So it's really quite stunning. They have a light show. They have a lot of uh, events going on. And I'm sure that as uh, we move out of the pandemic and we are moving ahead, this celebration would be um, on a grander scale. Even last year, it was really stunning. So I'm sure in the years to come, it would be really, really special. Uh, Do put in two boat rides, one in the evening to see the lights and see the ghats and see the illumination. It's just spectacular. And then come down there on the ghats and walk through. So even if you're not living there and you're living in the, uh, you know, inside Varanasi, come to the ghats and walk by the ghats with lamps everywhere you see you will see lamps lit up so it's uh, it's very beautiful and also try to do a morning aarti because a morning boat ride on the ganga really stays with you forever so i would say if you had to go for a celebration go during uh, dev diwali perfect sunila so a- anything to end the episode like how would you like to end the episode on varanasi because now you have given me reason enough to go and i'm sure listeners and viewers on youtube would also have or add that to their bucket list, but like, how would you like to end it? Neil, I think uh, Varanasi is known as the the oldest city. It's more than, it's said to be something like three, in some places I found, they mentioned it to be 3000 years old. The other said it is 5000 years old and Mark Twain, the English author, uh, he was so enthralled by Benares or Varanasi or Benares as he called it, that he said that Benares is older than history, older than tradition, older even than legend and twice as old as everything put together. I would say don't wait to go there until very late. Like a common mistake that all of us do is we wait, uh, you know, we, we think of Varanasi as only a religious place to visit and we say we will visit there later in life. I don't think we should make that mistake because there is just so much more. Uh, for example, there is a Ratneshwar temple built right in the river, um, in the river by the Ghats which is actually leaning more than the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Um, You know, there are just so many other mysteries to be discovered there. And like they say, Banaras ki galiya and walking through those, we haven't even spoken about shopping and the brocades and the silk and the Banarasi saris. So there really is much, much more to do here 
other than the temples. So don't wait till, till you're much older, but try and do it when you're younger. You'll have more energy. You'll, you'll see a different uh, side of Varanasi. You'll probably, it's nice to be connected to spirituality. I think when you're a little younger, it makes a lot of difference in life. So I would say come to Varanasi now. Awesome. That's a very valid point you made over there, Sunila, that, you know, don't wait to visit Varanasi until you're a little older, older, because often it comes across as a very religious destination, very spiritual destination. And the youth is, are often like, okay, we'll probably visit it much later. But I certainly feel that, you know, it offers something for everyone and you should definitely visit because it puts you in this spiritual Zen mode. That I, and I spoke about that earlier also. And I noticed that when I uh, visited Rishikesh and I've been to Rishikesh like three or four times now, but it just makes you feel like going again and you've visited Varanasi twice yeah. now. So that's something that's great. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Sunila. Um, listeners and viewers on YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. Next week, we are going to talk about something in the North, something in Himachal Pradesh, a place of interest that was super significant in India's independence and Keep guessing what it's going to be, but we'll see you next Saturday with Travel, Explore, Celebrate Life with Neil and Sunila. Thank you so much. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe and keep traveling. <laughs>